Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Faller, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 29th of December to January 5th, 2019. Happy New Year everybody and may it be a year of truly good decisions and a lot of bravery and satisfaction for all of us. We have an exciting broadcast today, we have guest star Erica Raven joining us pretty soon from California and there is an application I wanted to share with you. It's a new application. It's only about a month old, but it already has more than 10,000 downloads. It's growing really fast. It's going to be a hub, a community for astrology, uh, especially astrology lovers, but also uh, people who like mysticism in general and uh, tarot and numerology and things like that. But astrology is the mainframe of it. And even though it's such a young application, there's already so much information on it. And you know what? Let me show it to you a minute. So I'm just going to open the app right now. I'm already calibrated as a Taurus. So it's opening up and immediately shows me an advertisement. And then I go to my page. It shows me my rating overall love money health career to this day and today's tarot card i can press the cards i need to choose them first okay so let's choose three cards for today Ooh, wow strong cards and I can even interpret the cards. So justice, upright, very nice. Money and career, reversed. Ooh, uncontrolled outburst, sexual tension. Oh my God. Well, I have to watch out for tonight. <laughs> and regarding health. I'm out of balance in some areas of my life. That's so true. That's so true. And that does affect my health and this cold that I'm having. So very precise. Um, there's a hint of the day. There's best matches. I love this. Our friend for today is a Sagittarius. Our love for today is a Virgo. Our career for the day is a Libra. And some articles... A lot about love and sex. There's also January in general, 2019, today, tomorrow, weekly, monthly, yearly. I mean, these guys thought about it all. And I can just press this. This is the discover button. And I can look at everything that's happening in the world of astrology. And as this community grows this would be much more informed and up-to-date. But already, look at how many articles, and I'm sure you can find something you want to read. Um, there's pictures and videos, all kinds of memes connecting to astrology, videos about astrology. Look at this. This is just wonderful. Just wonderful. I mean... Being connected to all this hub of information, just in the palm of your hand. Wow. Wonderful. And something about love, personality, life, and funny things, and just generally about studying astrology. So, check it out. And as I said, I have a featured uh, link uh, just be, just be beneath the video, you have one for Android and you have one for iOS. I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think. This comes from a company that is very well known for applications like Clean Master that had over a billion, has over a billion downloads. A billion downloads, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, in Android and iOS. Uh, and I think if you just see the logo, everybody knows about it. 
And it's not only programs and applications that they do. They actually have extensive research and development, which only giant companies can afford to do that. And they have an AI department. They make robots. They make robots for hotels, for, uh, you know, governmental offices, including the ones that move between the rooms and vend the coffee and vend the sandwiches and stuff. And... Um, or, or greet people at the entrance. I mean, like, serious uh, stuff, huh? And also, robots that are tutors for kids. Can you imagine that? I want to learn English with my robot friend. And they have these automatic translators, too, like they had in the sci-fi movies that translate you automatically, which is crazy. So it's, it's a really th serious thing that they decided to uh, 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 take up an astrology of and, and make it so inclusive and just merge all the different streams and uh, from YouTube and from other ch social media channels and just bring it all into your palm. I love that idea. Anyway, now to Erica Raven. Erica Raven is a dear friend I met through Facebook and we've been in touch for a few years. Uh, she's stationed in northeastern California, and she's an amazing tarot and numerologist. And she's going to be joining us and actually doing a spread for 2019. She's going to take five cards, four that signify each part of the year. Each one was, would be three months' time. And then the fifth would be the greater significator of the year, the key to it all the key to it all. So, uh, I can't wait, and of course we'll be talking about this week and about the correlation between the tarot and the astrology of 2019. Let's watch. So, we are now recording. Um, I want to greet Erica Raven for joining us on this weekly message. Erica, thank you for joining this broadcast. I'm so happy to do this together. I love it, and I love you. Thank you for having me. Well, the, f the feeling is totally mutual, and I'm happy we're doing this New Year message together. Erica is both a numerologist and a tower reader, and she's going to give us a prediction, a tower prediction for 2019 that I'm personally very much looking forward to, and I want to see if it correlates with the astrology as well, because I am going to talk a little bit about 2019 coming up. In the meanwhile, I hope you're all having wonderful holidays. And me and Erica have been shooting uh, twice or once before. Was it twice or once? We've done it once before. Once before. So this is the second time and hopefully not the last one. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the week ahead and uh, what's the energy like in the celestial sphere. And then we're going to go down to Erica's prediction of 2019 and talk about how it correlates with, uh, with the astrology of 2019. So, <clears throat> what kind of week are we heading into? We're heading into a week which could be, could feel quite turbulent. It's quite a jolt. There's a lot of energy coming in. There's still the need with all that Capricorn energy in the sky to be very mature and very responsible and take up uh, matters into our own hands in a, an adult fashion and set things on rails that have a strategic aim to them it's about growing up and it's about facing life and fighting for what you need and and want as mars is going to move into aries in the beginning of 2019 a lot of that male energy is going to come forward it's quite an energetic sign to start a year with generally adding to that this week, we're going to have Mercury, uh, the planet of communication, and Uranus, its higher octave, the planet of higher communication, of the higher mind, trining. 
And this is a time that we can all be more flexible in the way we think and navigate our life forwards. The pace can fasten and flexibility can allow us to let ourselves go where we haven't let ourselves go before. It's about thinking outside the box. It's about innovation. It's about flexibility, as I said. And it's about allowing yourself to boldly step forward in your life and feeling the excitement. So rigidity and too much judgment can actually be contraproductive on this week. Adding to that, we're having the sun conjunct Saturn. So that, of course, adds up to all of that Saturnian Capricornian energy in the sky. It can dampen our spirits because we can see how much work there is in front of us on the grounds of reality this week. But we have to remind ourselves that we only see it this way because we are responsible and because we are taking a much more adult stance towards our problems and challenges. There could be matters between fathers and sons and generally between uh, authoritative, authoritative figures and yourself. It's a time to watch more closely your relationships with people who are older or at a higher rank than you are because it could be a productive and positive time, a time of an upgrade. But if we're not careful, it could be a time of clash as well. And talking about Saturn and the Sun, any, any Saturn-Sun conjunction always brings up uh, bone or teeth problems with a lot of people. So first of all, uh, we can have uh, more back pains and, and, and toothaches on this time. And we need to watch our health a little more, more closely as the Sun symbolizes our life force the light that we shine in this world, conjunct Saturn, the Lord of Time and Karma, which usually ends things, this is a time that more people can be leaving through the gates of Earth uh, than usual. So, just going down through the days, <clears throat> um, Saturday, we have Mars conjunct Chiron on the 29th. It's a very sensitive day. It's a time that we can really feel how our actions are lacking or need to be changed or need to be purified. And we could heal our actions on that day as well. Um, it is a sensitive time and, and Sunday is as well as the moon will uh, square Pluto. That can make us more dramatic that can make us uh, a little more temperamental. And we have to watch out for judgment and, and watch our tolerance also on Monday the 31st with the moon opposite Uranus. We could not have the patience to wait for people around us. But Tuesday onwards is a great time, I mean Monday as well, to take uh, serious matters, career matters into your own hands and actually boldly go forward. Don't do it too hastily and don't do it without thinking. Um, but internal power is flowing in. It's a great time for money. Wednesday is as well. It's a great time for intimacy and love. Wednesday could be as well. As I said, Wednesday is also the time that Saturn is conjunct the sun. But we have a lot of energy on that day coming from Mars trining the moon. Thursday the 3rd, it's a moon conjunct Jupiter. It's a day that we could have a lot of fun. It's not a great day for our left brains, but it's a wonderful day for our right ones. If we can allow ourselves to be more loose and feminine on that day, that could be fantastic. Hygieia, the uh, goddess of hygiene and health, is moving into Aries on that day. And that brings uh, health matters home. That's about taking personal responsibility for our health choices in our lives. And that could produce, in medical astrology, inflammation, inflammate, inflammatory conditions. Um, if you are in a dark place on the third and the fourth, on the nighttime, 
there's no, not going to be really a big moon in the sky, almost no moon at all. And it's going to be a splendid uh, meteor shower from the, uh, it's called the Quantaronids. And it's going to be really nice this year, if you can see it from a place that doesn't have a lot of light pollution. The fourth is a fast moving day. It's Friday and it's a great day for communication. It's a great day for doing a lot of activity and it's a great day for having fun. Saturday, the fifth, especially with the night between Friday and Saturday, and again, I'm talking in Eastern European time or Central European time. So the night between uh, Friday and Saturday could be tense. You have to watch out for aggression. Don't be too judgmental as Mercury is going to head into Capricorn, making us all much more serious and adding up to that somber energy in the sky. But we are heading into a new moon, which is a solar eclipse just on January 6th, a partial solar eclipse. It's an energetic peak. It's a time of great changes. And every new moon is a time of energetical imprinting. So watch your sponge on the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th, because that would be imprinted and follow you through the next lunar cycle. So, that's about all my blabbering for this week. And now, Erica, I really want to hear what you came up with when you uh, um, uh, opened the cards. But even before that, I want to say that... Um, Erica is giving readings, both numerology and uh, tower readings. She's stationed in Northeastern California, but she does that through the computer as we are speaking right now as well. So, and she's an amazing mystic, which I know for many years. So I recommend you contacting Erica on questions you might have on the etheric realm. And may she be a loyal guide through the ether. And May you be a loyal guide for us, the viewers, and for me on this uh, reading for 2019. The stage is yours. Oh, thank you, my friend. You're never blabbering. It's, it's, I especially like to hear that the leaks are going to be challenging from you because it's, it just makes it, I'd rather know if there's mm. going to be a challenge so I can step into it boldly, just be a little more careful. So I appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Um, I, I pulled these cards and I decided to make it kind of simple. I did five cards. Um, one card is just for an overarching context for the year that when it's our center, but when things come up, I, I was struck by how powerful this year seems like it's going to be. Um, so I, I did it in three month increments. So for January, February, and March, we have this card. It's the Fire Fairy. And this is all about creative action and optimism. So in the first part of the year, we want to, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people in America, we do New Year's resolutions. I don't know about other places in the world, but um, if, you, if you're thinking about putting new patterns into place, if you're thinking about starting a new career, if you're thinking about stepping into a new way of being, um, it's a really actually good time for it. And you have support from the universe for that. Um, you want to act boldly. Um, and But it's really important to stay optimistic. Not Pollyanna. Oh, everything's fine when it's not. not but be optimistic. You know, walk into these new ways with um, belief in yourself. Or belief in um, that you... Erica, we're losing you a little bit. We're losing you. We can't hear you. Really? Yeah. Oh. So we need you to talk slower and just make sure you have a good connection. Yeah. I'm, well, I apologize for that. I'm sitting right next to the router. Um, mm -hmm. well, we just want to move into our, our new year. It's an optimism. It will be really helpful and we should be able to um, set set new habits into place and stick with them. It's a good time for that, and that's what the cards say. I don't know if you want me to go into the second quarter right away. Or Look, uh, uh, in the meantime, well. 
in the meantime, the synchronicity is amazing uh, between the astrological patterns and the uh, the thing you say about the beginning of the year. But I can uh, comment on that at the end, so I don't disturb your flow. <laughs> okay. So um, for April, May, and June, this is the dragon, and this is about power and strength. What strikes me most about this card is to remember never to mistake a gentle person for a weak person. Power isn't about being louder or pushing or these kinds of these kinds of behaviors. Power is about really resting deeply in your own being, in your own highest self, in your own highest truth. So for some reason, the cards are suggesting that for the second quarter of the year that we really draw strength from our inner core. And, um, and look, look around for people in your life who behave that way as well. They'll make good partners in your new endeavors and um, they'll make, make good friends. Being the loudest isn't powerful, right? Being, you know, right. being physically the strongest isn't necessarily powerful. This is really about integrity and, and truth. Um, and yeah, subjective truth, not just objective truth. There's not as many of those, but know your truth. Listen to other people's truths. You know, be loving, be kind, be gentle. Power is gentle. <laughs> Strength can be, it's strong, but it can be very gentle. It can break. We're losing you again. Time. So we just want to be, we want to be strong and powerful like water for the second quarter of the year. Um, I'm sorry you're losing yeah okay, strong and powerful now. like water okay now and we're losing words in the it's middle gentle, gentle. it's so weird because i'm right next to the router and no one else is there's no cable huh the no cable in the vicinity no, no sometimes i'm telekinetic so it's probably my fault <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> I have an effect on electronics. I'm really sorry. I'm we all do. We all do. All anyway, I wanted I wanted to tell you that everything. your analogy, your analogy about the strong and the weak, and gentleness and and force, and how to utilize force. And when we look at nature, we see that what you said is totally correct. The smaller and more frightened and fragile an animal is usually it makes it much more violent and and combative and as bigger and stronger it is it can allow itself to be more gentle because it knows its own strength yeah go on so for the third quarter um we have the deer yeah, the deer is really about gentleness and diplomacy. This card's a, about relationships and being in kindness and relationships, being a really good listener. You know, I love the saying, you have two ears and one mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's important to listen more and talk a little bit less in the third quarter of the year. And when we do need to express ourselves in relationships and at work, we just be really careful think things through before we say them and um you know again more about gentleness and this is this is less about gentleness from inside as it is with being gentle in the world where as we walk in the world um yeah. you know the deer they step very lightly they mm -hmm. step very gently when they go around in the world so that's that's what that is and then for um for her October, November, and December, we have yes. the Earth Fairy. And the Earth Fairy is, is about physical health, grounding, and foundations. It's interesting because we're in, we're in that part of the year now, and this is when people get sick, and this is when people are tired. It's the holiday season. Um, and that's when we need to you know, drink, our, drink our elderberry syrup every day and make sure you have a little tonic against the cold and flu, right? I did. You stay grounded. And um, so that's 
just really about making sure, you know, your home is a peaceful place, that you're taking care of your body, that you're really, you're staying strong and grounded for that part of the year. It really makes a lot of sense given that that's where we are now and we need those things in fall and winter. Um, but the, the card I want to offer for the whole entire year, whatever comes up is forgiveness. Wow. I think it was, it was really perfect when it popped out because, you, you know, forgiveness isn't always for other people. You might need to forgive yourself sometimes. You might need to forget here. I need to forgive the president every day and remember he's very sick, you know? I mean, it's really, where, <laughs> where I live in America right now, it's really, it's really hard. Like, he's a very sick man. And instead of punishing him, I want to send forgiveness and love and hope that what's going to come out of it is he. We're losing you. I can't hear you. Forgiveness isn't something that you do and it's over. Forgiveness can be something that you have to recommit to every time something comes up. So uh, you have a disagreement with your mate. You need to forgive them or forgive yourself. It might come up again. Forgive them. Forgive yourself again. It's not like you just do it and it's done. You know, it, it's a really good practice. Um, for our whole lives every day look at where we're holding something against ourselves or another and just breathe it's a wonderful wonderful uh, reminder from the, from the wonderful those are those are your cards for the year i apologize that the internet's spotty that's really a bummer but, um, well we we know. deal with what we can and i think your message would come true and I want to tell you that, first of all, thank you for sharing this profound message with us. Secondly, it really correlates with the astrology. And I want to talk a little bit about the astrology of 2019, which is both a year which is really powerful and could be turbulent and uh, very transformative for a lot of us. And it could be a bold year as well. It needs to be a bold year as well, a year that we should dare, a year that we don't listen to our fears and anxieties. And really a year that sets the stage for many people for 2020. On 2020, on January 2020, we have this huge conjunction in the sky between Pluto, which is the lord of the underworld, and volcanoes, uh, other, uh, aka Hades. And, um, and Mr. Saturn conjunct. And they're going to be very closely conjunct to the South Node all through 2019. And just peaking at January 2020. And this is one influence that is following us all through the year. And it is about making sure that we, as you said, honor the truth make the change needed within our own shadows to abide by ethical and, and moral laws that bring us into a better place over the years. It's about realigning and it's about a power shift and understanding that things that were powerful in our eyes before are no longer as powerful as they seem. They have lost their aura because we now understand the, the importance of other things in our lives and it's about growing up and allowing ourselves to change and dealing with our shit and taking it up with both our hands and taking full responsibility for it cleaning in a way our own house our own home and of course i'm not talking only about your own physical home and the place you live i'm talking also about your internal home and the place you reside in uh, in your body so a lot of people and organizations and people in government that are now in power can be losing their power other people that are powerless could be gaining power new authoritative figures are going to merge and grow and the whole way we look at the structure of geopolitical power and finance in the world is going to change so that's one thing and that's something we need to be ready for for 2020 2021 
And through 2019, there's also another aspect in the sky following us throughout the year, but especially, as you said, in the beginning of the year, that really calls upon us to boldly go where we've never gone before, to dare, to dream, to be optimistic, to believe, to see the dream and fight for it, in a sense, in a naive fashion, but according to our own truth, joining as an ocean in order to change things for the better. It's the enlightenment of the masses, if you will. And what I'm talking about is the square that is going on between Neptune and Jupiter throughout the year. Jupiter is the great benefactor and the great uh, 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 bringing of enlightenment, uh, bringer of enlightenment. And uh, Neptune is about the truth, the universal truth out of space and time and about nature and about the world and about the public. So, um, this tight square that is going to be there more in the beginning of the year and then again in the last part of the year, just before the ending, uh, is really going to help us push forward. But as you said, Erica, we need to make sure that this enlargement, that this stepping forward, that this growth is sustainable, is responsible, that it's not disattached from reality, that it's not delusional. And we could see a lot of false growth as well that can crumble on uh, later on in the beginning of 2020. And I remember you saying that we are having a peak. The dragon is coming in in the middle of the year. Also, astrologically, the, the middle of the year is going to be much more intense as that Pluto-Saturn conjunction on the south node dealing with our own unfinished business, homes, families, past, emotions, growing up, allowing ourselves to transmute and change and take up responsibility and become more powerful and have power that is much more authentic, uh, the dragon comes in in the middle of the year. So it could be a more challenging time as we need to face the truth. As the Japanese like to call it, as Japanese philosophers, the so-ness of things. Things are so. So to face their soreness and to start working with it. And because Saturn, Pluto, they don't really mind what we wanted things to be like, wish them to be like, or were afraid they could be. They bring the shit and they spread it through the fan. And if you want to deal with it, that's the time to do it. So... And then staying grounded and keeping your own flame well kindled at the end of the year is a really wise advice as we are going in to this more powerful cycles of change that are going to happen in the beginning of 2020 and throughout the year in 2021. And I just want to mention that the last time that these cycles were in the sky, it was the 30s, late 30s. And we remember how the world was redrawn in the 40s. And new powers came up, new economic structures, new borders, new countries. Of course, we don't have to go through another world war. But as governments, as political structures, as very powerful people are going to lose their ground, you can bet that some of them are going to act out in a much more radical way that can affect the masses as well. So we have to watch our own asses and really work on the stage throughout 2019 to be in a better position as 2020 starts bettering our position throughout the year, daring, not fearing, of course, checking how deep the pool is before we jump in and that the water isn't freezing, but do jump in. So, Erica, 
we did yeah, it. I mean, I just I keep coming back to forgiveness. We we do want to be forgiving because that really frees up a lot of space to take on all the different ways that crash. You're so you're so right because forgiveness is is the key. We, if not, we could be too harsh both with ourselves and other people with that Saturn Pluto conjunction. And that conjunction is going to be in the the ending degrees of Capricorn, 22nd, 23rd degree. So look at your personal charts, people, and see what's aspecting it, maybe trining it or squaring it or opposing it, and maybe conjuncting it in your charts. Know how it affects you. Where do you have Capricorn in your chart? In what house? Know the area of your life that can be affected and transmuted and challenged throughout the year. Yeah, and I'll just say one more thing. Um, the number for 2019 is 11, and 11 is a master number um, in numerology. And it's just the number of being on a higher mental plane and being a little bit more aware. You know, there are deeper gifts to glean in an 11 year. Yeah, and it's a, it is, things are going to be elevated. This is a master number. We want to hang on to our inner child as well and i don't mean that in i'm not trying to be silly you know you really want to stay connected to that your inner child sure and your inner innocence yeah stay in your innocence stay in communication with that with that one that one knows that one's intuition hasn't been smashed yet that one hasn't had all these things happen for decades yet that one's still connected to whatever it is, <laughs> that great being, whatever it is, that one's still connected to that. But we want to stay in touch with that part of ourselves as well. 11's a very powerful time. You know, you can really, if you ever wanted to enhance your, your um, abilities, whatever they are, it's a good time to work on your own extra, extra abilities if you can. Excuse me a second, Erica. Darling. We're recording here. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Um, so if there, there's uh, any, any extra abilities that you have, for example, we joked earlier, when I'm excited, lights sometimes flash or, you know, computers get wiggy. I could be a little bit telekinetic. Some people can lucid dream. Some people... Uh, um, help we're losing you again information from those who've passed on so, again yes. please we can't we can't we can't hear you well, yeah. whatever your extra abilities might be anything I, I, the word psychic is so you know i don't really love that word but but there's abilities that we push to the side often in our lives and if you have any sensitivities this is a really good year to uh, cultivate those. So I might work a little more on lucid three ability. Okay, great. Great. So take, do believe in your own abilities and, and do dream and be connected to that inner child and, and don't lose that innocence and that belief, you know. Definitely a very profound message, Erica, and a very important one, and really connects that square between Neptune and Jupiter throughout the year. And um, I think that, as Jesus said, I mean, excuse me if I'm bringing uh, organized religion to the table, but Jesus said that uh, you can enter heaven only with the heart of a child. And he was very right about that. Um, I remember um, The Mists of Avalon by, I don't remember the author's name, wonderful lady. And she wrote there. Bradley, her name's Marion. Yeah. Great. I remember her saying that the only people that have belief can actually go through the lake and reach the island of Avalon. Because people who don't only reach the monastery of the monks, 
and never see Avalon with her own eyes. That's true. And interestingly, the organized religion of Christianity has moved us away from the earth. It's moved us away from the animals. It's moved us away from... It's truly all about staying... Okay, Erica, the, the connection is really jiggy. We can't hear a word you're saying. Okay. Yep. I don't know why. I don't know why it is jiggy. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. What can we do? But I think we, we had a wonderful time. And I think we, we, we had a great we message. Yeah, so, we did. So, yeah. And I want to thank you again for joining us this time. And thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Same here. And have a wonderful 2019. May the light spread and may the light grow stronger. Uh, we definitely have to be in our 11th. Uh, vibration it is the 11th hour and it is a very powerful year for a shift and i think everybody recognizes what a huge shift we're talking about and it could be either a good one or a bad one we're walking a high rope and so many different it's levels gonna be people who are sensitive um, in an 11 year need to honor that sensitivity and realize what's going to come at us. If that's an invitation to be bold and step into our power, you know, it, it's, you know, it's, it's challenging, but it's supposed to be that way. That's how we grow. And there's a lot of people that aren't sensitive like us. We must be very patient with them because we do have what it takes to let things go and stay in our hearts and be strong for the whole world. We can do that. And that's what we need to do as sensitives and empaths this year. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful, Erica. Thank you for this again. And may you and your loved ones blossom in 2019 and in the cycles to come. And just have a wonderful night. I know it's nighttime in California. It's morning time in Israel. <laughs> It's almost midnight, I think, here. Wow. So thank you for taking the time and being with us. And I'm still waking up. But we did it cross-Atlantically again. So, you pee for us. Woohoo! Yeah. So take care, my friend. And see you soon. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>